Hi everyone, I'm attorney Aiden Durham with 180 Law Co. in Denver, Colorado, and welcome back to All Up In Your Business, and Happy New Year, we've made it to 2020. I capped off 2019 by taking a little trip to China. I found a screaming deal on a flight to Beijing and a bit on a whim, I booked it and then next thing I knew I was going to China for two weeks. Now, traveling and being out of town and working at the same time is challenging in and of itself, um, but really that's part of the reason, uh, the primary reason that I went into business for myself and why I love um, being an entrepreneur is that I have this freedom and ability to travel when I want to and to work remotely um, and to work when and where I want to. And I think that's really one of the biggest benefits of uh, being your own boss and being able to do what you want to do. And so in this episode of All Up In Your Business, we're gonna talk about how to travel and work remotely and a few things that I learned um, from my trip to China and some of the challenges that I had with trying to work there uh, while I was there. And then um, if you are interested, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'm gonna share some photos and uh, just some stuff from my trip to China. Before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and share and check the description for some additional information and some uh, freebie downloads and stuff too. So when it comes to traveling and working remotely or um, trying to get work done while you're on a trip or on vacation, I think the number one thing, and this is probably pretty obvious, but the number one thing to do is plan ahead. Plan for when you're going to be gone. Let your clients and customers know that you're gonna be unavailable for a certain amount of time or that you may not be as responsive as you normally are and make sure any uh, deadlines or contractual obligations that might come up while you're gone, make sure those are all gonna be taken care of too. If you um, had an agreement with a client that you're gonna get them something by this particular date and you're gonna be uh, on vacation on that date, Date, make sure that you've got it taken care of before you leave. The second super important thing for traveling and working remotely is going to be a VPN or a virtual private network. Now, uh, forgive me because I'm not a, I'm not a techie person. I'm not a, a, I know some stuff about computers, but that's not my area of expertise. So if I get some of the terminology wrong, um, forgive me. But basically what a VPN does is it creates kind of a secure tunnel between you and your device and the internet. And so where this comes into play, especially when you're traveling um, or working remotely, is oftentimes we're gonna be relying on public or unsecure Wi-Fi. If you are staying at a hotel or an Airbnb with uh, their Wi-Fi, it may not be a secure access. Or if you're gonna have to be working at coffee shops or other public networks, accessing the internet through those public or unsecured networks puts you and your privacy and your data at a lot of risk. And so if you're doing work on these public networks, really everything you're doing is at risk of being monitored, um, your devices can be hacked, your files, blah, 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 blah. So uh, VPN is super important for if you're gonna be working remotely or working on any kind of an unsecure network. Now, I am of the opinion that VPNs have a huge importance um, if for all businesses, regardless of traveling or being on an unsecure network. I think a VPN plays a very important role. I'm actually gonna do another video talking solely about VPNs and why I think they're so important in business, so stay tuned for that. And uh, I did a lot of research before my trip to China to figure out the best 
VPN and uh, because China has their, their great firewall, you basically can't get onto any Google products, you can't use Gmail, you can't, uh, Facebook, Instagram, that's all blocked in China. And so I needed a way to be able to access my email and my social media while I was there. And um, in my research, I found one of the best was ExpressVPN. Their security measures are uh, among the best that I could find. And they were one of the few who said that their servers worked in China. While it it worked relatively well. It wasn't perfect. I was able to connect to um, Google stuff and Instagram and my social media on my phone while I was there, but my laptop and my tablet was a different story. Uh, I couldn't quite get that connection going, but without having that VPN, I would have been I would have been completely lost. I couldn't use Google Maps. I uh, wouldn't have been able to look up uh, places to go or things to do. I mean, obviously there are other resources besides Google, but who the hell knows what those are. But generally speaking, when it comes to VPNs, in my opinion, ExpressVPN is one of the best. And I have uh, linked to ExpressVPN down in the description. So if you're interested in checking them out, uh, you can do so there. And then talking about internet and uh, connecting to things, another important thing to do if you're gonna be uh, traveling and trying to work remotely is find out what your internet options are going to be. Research obviously your uh, hotel or wherever you're gonna be staying, see if they have uh, Wi-Fi available. If not, you know, look into the different uh, coffee shops or libraries or um, other places nearby that might have Wi-Fi available. Or even better is get a mobile hotspot. Now, I will tell you, this was an absolute lifesaver while I was in China. I bought a Skyroam mobile hotspot. It's this teeny little orange uh, hockey puck looking thing that uh, gets you on the internet. As long as there's some kind of cellular data, um, it, you'll be able to create a Wi-Fi hotspot uh, in your pocket. So I just carried this thing around in my backpack all the time, and I always was able to get onto Wi-Fi, um, assuming my VPN connection was working too. But without this, I would probably still be roaming around the streets of Beijing, trying to figure out how to get back to the train station or something. A lot of us have, um, you can turn your cell phone into a mobile hotspot, but if you're gonna be traveling somewhere where uh, your, your cell phone carrier, if they charge a high rate for international data, um, sometimes not. that's not the best option. I did crunch the numbers because I was in China for two weeks and so I could have used my uh, cell phone international data plan for that time, but the cost for that for two weeks ended up, it would have been more expensive than um, buying the Solace, the Skyroam, and um, I even got like two weeks or 20 days worth of day passes for the Skyroam. So I had 24 hours of um, uninterrupted Wi-Fi access and I bought a bunch of those and that was still cheaper than it would have been if I had just used my cell phone as a hotspot. So I'm a big fan of that. And even better is this little thing is a battery pack too. So when you're staring at your phone, um, trying to use Google Maps and figure out where the heck you are in the world, that's really going to to suck the battery life out of your cell phone. So thankfully, this little thing, I could just charge my phone or my laptop, whatever I had to do, um, and go about my day. And it has a, a huge battery life. It, it held a charge for a really long time. And again, there's a link in the description if you're interested in checking out the uh, Skyroam Solace as well. And even if you don't have one of those, if you don't do a um, mobile hotspot like this, 
a battery pack or a mobile charger is going to be another essential that you're going to want to have if you're traveling and working remotely. Because again, if you're out sightseeing, if you're um, using GPS to figure out where you are, that's going to suck battery life out of you. If you're taking a lot of pictures or videos, that's going to suck your phone's battery life. So having a backup battery pack or something you can recharge your phone with is going to be a lifesaver. The next thing is a good power adapter. If you've ever been outside of the US, you know that most other countries don't use the same kinds of outlets that we do. Um, they're different shapes, different sizes. And if you try to plug your uh, you know, blow dryer into the wall in China, it might explode. I had that little bit of experience. It didn't explode, but it did really heat up and ended up actually melting my blow dryer. A universal power adapter is a super handy thing to have around. And a lot of the power adapters have extra plugs, so extra USB charging ports, and it really allows you to charge all of your stuff from one outlet too. And another really important thing with these uh, charging adapters, you wanna make sure not only is it going to be an adapter for the type of outlet, but also the power itself. So if there's a, and again, I'm not an electrician, so I'm probably getting some of the terms wrong, but um, different voltages coming out of the socket may not be compatible with the uh, voltage of your appliance or the thing you're using. So you wanna make sure your adapter is also going to be a, uh, a power adapter, or it's going to work to not have that surge of electricity into your computer or whatever it is you're using. There are a lot of really good ones on Amazon. I got a cheap one um, probably three years ago for a trip to France and I've still had it. I use it every time I travel. Um, and so uh, definitely check online for some good power adapters. And if you find a good one, it'll, you know, you'll use it forever. My next tip is to disable two-factor authentication where you can. This especially applies if you're gonna be in a place where you can't use your cell phone data, um, if you're not gonna be able to you know, text uh, just through your cell phone like you normally would. A lot of two-factor authentication um, for a lot of our programs and a lot of apps requires that they text you a code and then you put that code into your device to say that, yeah, this is actually me and to verify that um, someone's not trying to hack into your account. But if you can't get cell phone data, then that text message isn't gonna come through. And uh, if you're trying to get on your Gmail uh, account and you have two-factor authentication set up, you might not be able to get into it because you can't get that text message. So what I did was I downloaded Google Authenticator, which is like a QR code kind of thing that you use to do get around that two-factor authentication. So if your programs or your apps have something like that, which allow two-factor authentication without uh, text verification, then take advantage of that. Otherwise, it may be necessary to turn off two-factor authentication while you're gone. Now, of course, that's risky because you're putting your security at risk, but if it's that versus not being able to access something, then you know the better choice, obviously, is to turn off the two-factor authentication. My next tip, and this is really a tip for life that I try to carry with me always, but is to take advantage of downtime and waiting. Um, in China, I spent a lot of time obviously getting there. I spent a lot of time at the airport and on airplanes. I um, traveled between a bunch of different cities, so I was on a train for a long time. I spent a lot of time on trains and in subways and stuff, and I wanted to not waste that time and take advantage of uh, that downtime. So those were the moments when I worked, not when, um, you know, not during the day while I was in a city that I wanted to see. I wanted to get out and explore and sightsee and do all the fun things. But then I knew I had a 12 hour train ride ahead of me. That's a good 12 hours where I can get a lot of work done, I can be productive. And so taking advantage of those little moments or those big moments where you have 
literally nothing better to do uh, except work and get some stuff done. And then finally, this seems so obvious, yet uh, it is so easily missed. Pay attention to time zones, especially if you're scheduling things for when you get back. I've done this so many times where I've um, you know, visited family in Southern California and I'm emailing and setting up a meeting for when I'm back in Denver. I get back in Denver and realize, oh, this meeting I accidentally scheduled in the Pacific time zone rather than uh, mountain time zone. And uh, going to China, it's a pretty different time zone there. So it was easy to figure out if I was missing a time zone, but um, pay attention to it. If you are uh, setting up meetings or having phone calls, just remember, you know, where you came from isn't probably the same time zone of where you're in now. And if your computer or your device automatically updates its time zone, you're going to want to make sure you're paying attention and being aware of all that. That's all for this episode, folks. Drop a comment below and let me know what you think. If you have any tips or tricks for getting work done uh, while you're traveling or working remotely, I'd love to hear them. I'm a, I'm a big fan of trips and vacationing. I try to do it as much as possible. So I'd love to hear what you all do to make sure you're productive and able to get some work done if you have to while you're on vacation. Also, be sure to check out my blog. Uh, the link is in the description for more information on how to travel and work remotely. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Aiden Durham, and I'll see you next time.